I don't know if, if acting itself has changed. Uh, there's certain, I mean, as I've said, different schools of approach, different ways, different structures focused on different concerns. <coughs> um, what I understand Lee Strasberg focused on was relaxation, um, sense memory, and, and effective memory or emotional recall. Um, other instructors, other teachers may have focused on spontaneity. Others may have focused more on the development of place, believing in place. Others may have focused on uh, finding the physical and psychological action in a scene. Uh, they're all part of, excuse me, part of acting, <clears throat> but different instructors for different reasons may have focused on different approaches as opposed to back in the group theater when they were coming upon Stanislavski's method mm -hmm. they were focusing on the particulars that Stanislavski had codified at that point mm -hmm. based on his observations of his actors mm -hmm. um, but approaches have certainly developed and that's that's simply natural I don't know if acting itself has gotten better. Uh, <laughs> sort of a separate I, I question. Think, well, one of the things that I've, I've noticed is that actors are very serious about acting. It's become very serious. And it's also become, uh, for those that have made it, quote unquote, uh, very lucrative. And once you have lots and lots of money involved, it gets very, very serious. It's like sports. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the athletes in sports have paid fortunes, and so it becomes very, very, very serious, as opposed to, you know, kids in, in the schoolyard are just playing basketball for the fun of it. Uh, and, and if they haven't watched their icons, they, they won't take it seriously. They'll enjoy the game itself, the fun of the game itself. <clears throat> and I've noticed that that particular uh, aspect of, of just the joy and the fun of, of it for its own sake, art for art's sake, uh, seems to be less so. And the seriousness of acting has moved in. How does that get bled out of the craft or the art? Because you think about Brando's time, it's making a film like Streetcar, there was a budget, right? There was a studio, and there must have been <clears throat> pressure about the bottom line. Uh, Are you talking about the film version? Of yeah, Streetcar? yeah. For example, there must have been those days. Um, that, well, I think in those days there was more of a, a, a respect for acting as an art form. Mm -hmm. uh, and people like Elia Kazan mm -hmm. and, and Stella Adler. And, Harold Klerman and those people in that that group were really interested in acting and storytelling as, as an art form and, and in what way could they make a statement and Arthur Miller comes out of that I think his death of a salesman is a timeless piece and an attempt to show the, the futility of the supposed American dream mm -hmm. uh, Today, obviously, it's about what makes money, and so a lot of what takes place in films is really, the majority of it is spun out by Hollywood to make money. And, and the stars are getting paid for small fortunes, and, and so it becomes very, very, very serious. There's a big difference between that and a kind of sincerity and a dedication. And I have a feeling a, a film like The King's Speech uh, when you look at that beautiful, beautiful piece of work on, on every level, on every level, the music, the scenery, the mm -hmm. costumes, the acting, the, the, the vibe in it, uh, was so, to my mind, anti-commercial, mm -hmm. but transcended it and became really a beautiful statement about a relationship. It wasn't about sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Mm -hmm. It was about a human relationship, a very simple story. Mm -hmm. Uh, but beautifully, beautifully put together and reeks of, of intelligence. And in I the think, writing and in the performance. And the yes, everything. Yeah, right. The writing, the performance on, on, on every level. Right. Uh, 
<clears throat> but that, to my mind today, is rare. If you turn on your television, you have reality shows and you have all kinds of really third rate, I won't even say second rate, third, third rate viewing. Mm -hmm. And the sad thing is that people sit in front of that and they eat junk food for their mind mm -hmm. and, and that's all they know and they subliminally think that that's the way to behave according to what they're viewing on television, which is basically violence and, and fear and hatred and all the rest of that. But it's a quick fix. Uh, it's something. I don't know if it's a fix. <laughs> I don't know if it's a fix. It's, it's, I, I think it's just chewing gum for the mind. I think it's just feeding and keeping, making people more and more stupid uh, instead of becoming more intelligent. And I think <clears throat> arts, any artist who goes into art should be sincere in their commitment to their particular art, whatever that may, whatever the particular medium, but, but not be serious about it. Dedicated, yes, because you, you understand the value of, of art. You're offering something a little bit above society's concerns with which is about making money and all the rest of that um, and then from art you do move into meditation any sincere artist has to go deeper and question what's being perceived by that artist and of course what's going on internally in the three pounds in my skull mm -hmm. is important because that's that's been conditioned and now in spite of the conditioning can I utilize that conditioning to <clears throat> uh, bring forth something that's from another dimension if you will if I can phrase it that way do you think the audience is meant to be in a certain place when they receive a work if you go to a theater and you buy a ticket we tend to think you're going to be entertained or maybe informed um, is there a kind of an ought or a should for how an audience should be if they're going to experience a great work of art? I don't know. I don't know. I do know that most of the time the audience goes to, goes to have an experience of some sort. Mm -hmm. uh, and you would hope as an artist that in some way the people that, that, that are in the audience in some way have moved, even if only for a moment, into a, a different kind of space. I think if you listen to a beautiful classical piece of music, it's got to affect your brain cells differently than if you're listening to, you know, some kind of acid rock, hardcore kind of music. Uh, Coming out of that experience, you hope they've been Sorry. changed. Coming out of the experience of watching the work, you hope they've been changed. I don't know if they've been changed, but, but at least have gotten a taste of something. I, I, let's say I grew up in the slums and my, we were poor, and, and I, you know, I don't know, my father was a drug addict who was killed in a shootout, and my mom, you know, raised me and she had to go to work and uh, can in spite of that can I can I come up with something deeper can I come out of that kind of uh, influence if you will uh, I mean that's that's really what you're hoping to bring to someone of that of that ilk if you will so I'm accustomed to hard rock, but now, or, or reading comic books, and now you've brought me Shakespeare. And so that kid in that environment is now exposed to Shakespeare or some really good literature. That, that child has to have a completely different sensibility. It's like when I was a kid, to me the whole world was the, the neighborhood in which I lived, which consisted of a block. <laughs> <coughs> you know, and then I realized, oh, you know, you move to another neighborhood, a couple of blocks away, there's another neighborhood. Right. And then gradually, oh, there's a whole other different 
piece by piece. Yeah, yeah, and all of a sudden, you know, New York City is something more than New York City. You know, the other states, and gradually, <clears throat> and you begin to become exposed to that. Uh, but if all I know is my neighborhood, um, it's very extremely limited. So I think art, even if the audience comes and they're not very informed, they still may get exposed to something that can hopefully uh, offer something of value to their reality, to their sense of reality. At the other end of the spectrum is the person who comes with a deep knowledge of having read all of Shakespeare, etc. And you, sometimes people think that's the way you're supposed to go to art is you do the background research and you, you learn all about what the particular script is about that you're about to see performed. And so you come in as the, like, the educated consumer. Yeah, I, I'm not so sure about that. <clears throat> it's like a carpenter will look at a tree, mm -hmm. but he doesn't see the tree. He sees the tree with all of his knowledge. Mm -hmm. Or if you're a lumberjack. Mm -hmm. uh, if I just look at the tree and I have no knowledge about it, I'm exposed to the truth of the tree. So sometimes your literary buffs, if you will, that are so filled with, with knowledge and about a particular play, for example, and they go and, yes, yes, and I remember I've seen 10 different versions of Hamlet and this particular version, and I'm comparing, rather than just observing what this is, mm -hmm. but I will in my mind compare. So I'm not really seeing what's going on. I'm only seeing reflected back my own prejudices. So I don't know. Uh, I think the whole idea of, of living is, is to see the truth and uh, rather than have my accumulated prejudices and knowledge color what's being seen, which means I don't really see it, obviously. And then I'm just caught up in agreeing with you or disagreeing with you, which is you know, somewhat childish. You know, I agree with what you said really means uh, whatever you said is in already in accord with what I already think. Or I disagree, which means you're not in accord with what I already think. Even if I have good intentions, I think, well, I'm, I'm reading all about this, this play because I really want to try and, and understand what the playwright was going for when I go in to see it, or you know, something that seems to me well-intentioned. If, if the play is, is intelligently put together, even if you're a kid from the ghetto, you should be able to understand any uh, Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. um, it's up to the artist to make the work accessible to everyone. It has to be universal in that, in that sense. If it's only for a select few, to me, it doesn't really qualify. It's got to be universal. It's got to be truthful. Mm -hmm. It's got to be interesting. And it's got to be universal. 